London. I am so excited to be here in London. I'm over for Freeze London, which has happened this past week. I've been in quarantine for a little while and I can't wait in my next video to show you guys all of the London galleries that I love and some of my favorite spots around London. So definitely check out next week's video. But this week I wanted to kind of start the series that I've had on my mind for a while, just based on questions that people ask me a lot. Uh, they see my Instagram, they might know me personally, and they have a lot of questions for me around different parts of the art world, which is totally understandable. The art world is a little bit hard to understand <laughs> from the outside. And so I wanted to talk about galleries today and art galleries and kind of go over some of my most asked questions pertaining to art galleries. Uh, if you all have any questions, please feel free to comment below to email me. I'm more than happy to answer them. And it's always really interesting to um, hear what people, you know, are intimidated by or unsure about. So hopefully this video um, makes the process of going to an art gallery a little bit more enjoyable and a little less intimidating for everyone. So let's start with some of the basic questions. I think this is actually one of the most complicated questions, but one of the most important questions that I get asked. So let's start with that. How do you know if an art gallery is good? <laughs> so I get asked this question a lot. And honestly, an art gallery can range from a frame shop <laughs> to someone putting something up online to one of the finest art galleries in the world, uh, you know, like a Scarstead gallery. So the range is quite extensive. The barrier to entry in order to create an art gallery is quite low, particularly in this day and age, anyone can start an art gallery online. And so it's becoming even more confusing to understand a gallery's quality and if it's good or not. I will say a lot of this, you know, it's subjective to each their own, but there are some key characteristics that'll help you understand if a gallery is good by art world standards. And I want to clarify here as well, I personally only like uh, primary art galleries rather than secondary art galleries. So what does that mean? A primary art gallery is if an artwork becomes available for the first time directly from the artist's studio. So a gallery is working with an artist, they represent this artist, they really have a vested interest in this artist's career. And those are the kind of galleries that I like to visit. It's a lot more personal you they're not just there trying to make money they're actually interested in you know finding great collectors for this artist as opposed to a secondary um art you know gallery those are wonderful and they're very there's plenty that are world renowned but there's also a lot that are not and that take works that they may have gotten from other buyers they're just trying to flip them you see a lot of this with like the pop art galleries something like an eden fine art where they're just selling at alec monopoly or um you know a really 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 pass through many hands, you know, cause or something. And those are not the galleries that I would um, recommend you visiting. By all means, if you want to, go ahead. But that's those usually aren't the ones that I like to visit. I really am interested in a gallery that's invested in the artist and an artist's career. And they're putting all of their resources towards fostering that artist's career and finding great collectors for them. So those are the galleries that I'm going to talk about moving forward and how to find um, good ones out of, out of that pool just to be clear so out of the primary art galleries how do you figure out which ones are good because honestly in new york alone my short list of galleries that i consider to be great that i like to visit it's a hundred and then my big list is about 300 galleries so there's tons and tons of galleries um, obviously that list can be much smaller if you're in a different city even in london there are far less galleries than say new york or la but there are some key categories that can help you figure out if an art gallery is good. So let's start with the first category, which is if that art gallery attends an art fair. So first of all, let me just say, this is actually changing quite a lot right now, considering art fairs might not be as prevalent in the future. Um, you know, we know, we don't know when travel is gonna open back up again. We're just gonna have to see, but Usually, if an art gallery goes to art fairs, um, that's a really good signal. It's this kind of the same signal that you get if 
a person goes to um, a great university because they've had to go through this vetting process where they've had to apply, they've had to talk about their program, and then they get the approval from boards who basically say like, yes, this gallery is worthy of this gallery isn't. And so based on the fact it has to go through this approval process, if you see that an art gallery has attended, you know, Chicago Art Fair, Seattle Art Fair, Art Basel, um, you know, it all just depends. Obviously an Art Basel is one of the absolute best art fairs you can attend, but um, that's kind of the range uh, that you get. So if you look and you see that an art gallery has attended an art fair, it's a pretty good sign that it's probably gonna be a good quality um, art gallery. Sorry, my camera died. <laughs> so another really good thing to look at when you're looking for a quality of a gallery is to look into their artist because ultimately a gallery is no better than the artists that are on their roster. And I would look at the artist's CVs. So yes, artists have resumes just like everyone else. And I would look at their, their resumes and see, you know, have they been in any museum collections? Are they in private collections? Have they been in just the art world for a certain amount of time? Have they had a lot of exhibitions? This is a really good way to understand the quality of the artist, which will then reflect on the quality of the gallery. And honestly, just because you're a younger emerging artist doesn't mean you don't have a fantastic resume. I've been to many Eastside galleries where an artist is in their 20s or 30s and they've been in tons and tons of group shows you know they've worked with a lot of different public art funds and you know have been in a lot of private collections so i'm by no means saying that you have to be a chelsea blue chip gallery to have an artist roster that's fantastic and um, that can really span across the newer more emerging art galleries and artists um, all the way up of course to the chelsea galleries so i would look at that when it comes to using the fact that galleries have been written about in publications like Art News or on the New York Times maybe or in Vogue even, I would be careful with that a little bit just because art galleries, just like any other business, um, a lot of them work with PR firms to have their stories placed in various publications. I think New York Times is probably one of the only publications that doesn't accept um, you know, any little PR <laughs> inputs or anything. Um, another thing to be aware of is like gallery network programs. So Artsy um, has one where basically galleries pay to be on their online platform. And then as a part of that membership, they're also featured in a lot of their publications and, and public um, articles that are online. So I would just be aware of that as well. Sometimes if it says like, oh, the best shows to go see you know in lower east side this week a lot of them are probably a part of their gallery network uh, just because that's part of what they're paying for so just be a little bit cautious of that and another thing that i would look at when trying to figure out if the gallery is high quality or not is do they have a regular exhibition cadence so if they're just an art shop and they're just trying to make sales they're probably going to have rolling inventory that's coming in and out they're not going to have like very clear exhibition cycles where they'll have four to six exhibitions a year and you know an exhibition that's up for say a month and a half and then it closes for a little bit and then a new one comes back up again that's definitely more what you're going to see in a high quality gallery that's a perfect way to figure out if you're just wandering to an art store or like a shop that's sort of masquerading as a gallery versus a really high quality art gallery and then this question, I find it to be kind of sweet and really funny when people ask me this, but so many people ask me this and they want to know, like, what do you wear to an art gallery? And honestly, you can wear anything you want <laughs> is, is the easy answer. This is probably the easiest one to answer. Um, I, it might be a little deceiving because in my photos that I usually take at galleries, I am more dressed up. I'm dressed up now but I love to dress up and that's just a personal choice for me versus you can wear jeans and a t-shirt into a gallery and no one's gonna turn you away because of how you're dressed I mean obviously if you walk into a gallery without any clothes on <laughs> that's just like any other institution they would have to ask you to leave but um, but yes I definitely don't worry about what you're wearing wear something comfortable and honestly wear really comfortable shoes i will say because if you are in a city where you're going around and visiting lots of galleries then you're probably going to be hitting up a few at any given time so wear some comfortable shoes but other than that wear whatever you want honestly 
Uh, this one, so can you take pictures in a gallery? Yes, you can totally take pictures uh, unless it otherwise says so. I've been to like one exhibition at Gagosian where it was a bunch of old Picassos and for obvious reasons they didn't want uh, anyone taking photos and so it'll clearly say if photos are not allowed but most literally 99.9% of the time you're able to take photos in a gallery similarly with filming in the gallery which is great and why I love love doing that here is an interesting one. Um, people ask like, how do you know what's going on? Like, how do you know what this exhibition is about and how do I enjoy it more? And this one is probably very obvious to people that are in the art world, but if you're not in the art world and you've never been to a gallery before, or you've only been to a few, you might not be aware of this. So I apologize because it's a little bit old, but galleries have these little cheat sheets called press releases where it's basically a sheet of paper which you can get when you walk into the gallery and it's just written out right here basically what the exhibition's about what it means why it matters this is where i scrape a lot of my content from on my instagram i try to pull um the essence of like what the exhibition is about and try to convey that in a really short way on my posts but ultimately this is what it is so if you haven't i honestly would recommend looking at this online before you go to the show because honestly having that knowledge and that context of what the exhibition is about makes the show a hundred times more enjoyable i promise you but if you're short on time or maybe you're just like popping in after lunch or something definitely just look at the press release and this will give you everything you need to know i promise and i will say the quality of press releases are varying based on gallery the bigger blue chip galleries do a really nice job of having a very concise press release. Sometimes the press release can be a bit like poetic <laughs> to say the least, but uh, yeah, just, just try to synthesize the best out of it. And you can always ask, frankly, the gallery assistant um, about the artist or the exhibition and that's their job. They're there to really tell you um, a little bit more about it. So feel free and comfortable to ask, ask them. That's why they're there. And then I wish, honestly, this went without saying, but I do kind of want to cover things that you should not do in a gallery because I have unfortunately seen all of these things take place. Um, number one, don't touch the art. I mean, don't touch the art, honestly. And if you're bringing kids in a gallery, just make sure they're also not touching the art and have that conversation ahead of time. The second thing is just a preference, honestly you don't need to walk into a gallery and pretend like you're in a church and like whisper or whatnot but if you are coming in and having extremely loud conversations or honestly i've seen someone come in with a full-blown boom box before playing music that's a little disrespectful that's disrespectful whether you're walking into a retail store a wine shop you know or an art gallery just don't do it just be respectful the other thing is usually galleries don't allow liquids. So leave your coffee cup outside. I do this a lot. I'll just put my tea or my coffee right outside the door and then grab it on my way out and it's no big deal. Leave it outside. Also try to avoid bringing in any like big umbrellas or like bulky things just because it makes the gallery assistants a little nervous. Obviously they don't want you to damage the art in any way. So they'll usually have like an umbrella stand at the front or yeah, just, just try to avoid doing that. And then the other thing that I've witnessed and it's really painful <laughs> and it hurts my heart is don't give the gallery assistant your CV. Don't give her your resume. She can't do anything for you. It's, it's, she really can't. If you're an artist and you're trying to get represented by the gallery, maybe if you're looking for a job, but honestly, even that you should look at online uh, as a gallery assistant or something. So don't go in and give your CV. They're just going to check it in the bin. It's not a good idea. And then this question is a really tough one and I honestly wish I had a better answer for it, but how do you know what you want to see? Like, how do you know when there's an exhibition or when you can go see artworks? And I'll start with the easiest answer, which is a little bit of self-promotion, but you can look on my Instagram. I'm always going to say, you know, I'm usually always trying to post a show that's currently on view and I'm gonna let you know when the show's closing. So check out my Instagram, go through any of the galleries that I have listed on some of the lists that I'll link down below, see if they're having shows. 
You can use an app called Seesaw. They also have um, a rolling list of exhibitions that are on at any given time. It's not gonna be fully comprehensive of everything that's out there, just because similar to the Artsy Network, you know, people do pay to be on that platform and to be featured. So it's gonna be a little bit tainted in that capacity, but yeah, I would definitely recommend um, doing that. If you want to put in a little bit of time and investment and you do live in a big city, you know, like New York, LA, Paris, Mexico City, I would recommend going to an art fair website like Freeze or Art Basel and filtering the galleries that are listed there by your city. Look through some of their artist programs, see if any look cool to you and sign up for their mailing list and they'll let you know every single time that they are going to have exhibitions. and. That's a great way. Honestly, Instagram is one of my favorite ways. So, you know, if you see a gallery like The Whole, follow them on Instagram. They're gonna post when they have an upcoming show. So there's a few different ways. There's honestly not just one beautiful source of truth. <laughs> I wish there was, but that's kind of actually what made me start my Instagram in the first place is I felt like all of this information was just scattered all over the web and I wanted a better way to communicate that a little more succinctly to people that were interested or that might not even have access to it but that's for another video the other thing to think about is like when do exhibitions even happen so the art world definitely goes on a cycle just like with many other um, businesses where the cycles tend to revolve around the art fairs or at least they used to when the art fairs are, are going to be happening and so the fall season there are like peak months so September is a huge month for gallery shows. You're always guaranteed to see a show in September. They start dwindling down a little bit into November. And then December is very much a big break, just like with any other business. Everyone goes on break for a while. You start to see shows start appearing again in January up until March. And then in March, for example, you start seeing art fairs again. Well, I guess technically it starts in February now with like Freeze LA and Zonamako, but then when you go into March, you have Independent, you have uh, Armory Show, and that's when you start seeing that sort of peak season for the spring, and then it really peaking out in May with Freeze New York, RIP. And then um, summertime is when all of the galleries usually take a big break. They put up some group shows, they experiment with the different artists that they have, and everyone kind of just like shuts off for the summertime. So summer and winter, not the best times to see shows, but fall and spring are great times to see shows so sorry that was not a great answer but it's the best you can do i'll try to link as many resources down below as possible for you this question is super interesting also has a bit of an ambiguous answer but the question is are the works for sale and the answer frankly is it depends <laughs> it totally depends so most art galleries will sell a lot of the artworks prior to the exhibition which is surprising I think to most people but it makes a lot more sense if you think about it because a lot of these art galleries have this huge list of huge collector base that they're constantly tapping into and for example if I'm a collector of a Trenton Doyle Hancock and James Cohen knows that you know a show is coming up of his they're gonna email PDFs and invite all of their you know potential and existing collectors to go see the exhibition early or check out the PDFs and kind of give them an opportunity to purchase before, you know, the general public sees it or an art fair, you know, things like that. And so a lot of the artworks can be sold before an exhibit. Some of them that sell during the exhibit, it honestly depends on the gallery. Um, if they do sell things during the exhibit, sometimes it's listed on, um, it's called a price list where it'll have all the artworks and there might be a little red dot beside them if they're sold that's a good way to see if they're sold or not. Honestly, there's no harm in asking. Frankly, just beware, I would ask, I would probably not ask in the big mega galleries like a Hauser & Wirth, a uh, Pace Gallery, Gagosian, or David's Warner, just because you're talking millions and millions of dollars worth of art uh, that you're gonna be seeing in those shows and they definitely probably have sold, so. But if you're generally curious, there's, there's no harm in asking, you might as well ask. And then this last question is a good segue and it's all about like setting your perspective I think when you're visiting galleries and people ask like why doesn't anyone talk to me in galleries like are people that work in galleries rude or snobbish and me for me personally I actually think it's kind of a misconception with gallery assistants and individuals that work in galleries I think they're honestly just really shy I think that they 
you know, a lot of them have art history backgrounds and come from more of an academic world where they're not having to be as open and social like you would in say a retail store where someone walks in and you're obligated to greet them and have conversation off the bat. That's really not the vibe of an art gallery. It's meant to be a little more meditative, a little more academic. It's It shouldn't be considered rude. They're, they're just giving you that privacy and space and Ultimately, uh, by all means, like feel free to ask them about the artist or the artwork, but just don't take it personally. It's not personal. If you think about it, all of the individuals that could come in and try to drop off their CP or, you know, harass them at the desk, like you kind of can't really blame them. So yeah, don't be intimidated, I think is the biggest piece of advice I would give. Do your research, but just like feel comfortable and free to ask. Go visit a couple of times, um, maybe to one close in your neighborhood or scroll through my Instagram and see where some of these are located. But the biggest thing is galleries are there so that you do get to go and see the artwork and that you enjoy it. They're for the public. They're meant for people um, to go and see these artworks. So don't feel like you don't belong there or you're not supposed to go or, or anything like that because it really is a beautiful thing to do and you can have a much more personal experience and beautiful experience seeing this art up close um, in this context than you would in say a museum or in another avenue so in my opinion this is my absolute favorite way to see art so I wouldn't want anyone to miss out on this if you have any more questions please feel free to leave them below and next week I'm so excited to share all of my London adventures with you but until then have a great weekend